Hey everyone, I'm going to show you what it takes to install NativeScript by Telerik in the Android SDK on an Ubuntu Linux computer. So this will allow you to develop NativeScript Android applications using Ubuntu. Now I've already gone ahead and made a convenient script that will allow you to take care of all of this in one command. Uh, but for the sake of learning, we're going to go ahead and open up that script that I developed and see step by step what's going on in case you want to maybe make revisions or customize it yourself, or maybe you're skeptical about installing somebody else's scripts on your computer and you really want to know what's going on. Uh, so what we're going to do is first we're going to go ahead and open up our web browser and navigate to the following URL. So the URL is github.com slash nraboy slash ubuntu hyphen native script hyphen installer. So when we're on the GitHub page for it, what we want to do is we want to click download zip. And we're going to go ahead and save this archive, um, which I believe will be in our downloads folder unless you've specified a different location for it. And go ahead and open it and try to extract it to our desktop here. And I just dragged it to my desktop and it extracted it for me. So before we actually run this thing, let's go ahead and open the script file so that way we can see what's going on. All right, so a lot of things going on here. First of all, everything that we install with this script is going to go into our Linux op optional directory, OPT. The Android SDK path is going to be OPT slash Android SDK. Because native script depends on Node.js, we're also going to install a version of Node uh, to a directory that's a child to OPT. And then we want to know who the parent user is. So this script, this script needs to be run with the sudo command. Um, I'm not saying run it with the root user, because that is the wrong way to do it. You don't want to run this script as the root user. You want to run it with the sudo permission. Um, so what you want to do is to find the parent user, the parent user being in my case, uh, this, this user is called nraboy, um, rather than root. And I'll explain why that's important soon. As far as what we're going to install, well, I've gone ahead and, and went to the Android website for developers and I've chosen the Linux version. I've also chosen a specific version of node. Uh, you'll notice that this is an older version, uh, 0 0.12. Uh, just because it's older doesn't mean that it's not sufficient because of many of the mobile development technologies, if you use a newer version of Node, it may not work correctly. I myself use this version of Node.js uh, for all of my mobile development, and it actually works quite well. Now if we jump down to uh, this command right here. This will allow us to install 32-bit um, applications because with Ubuntu uh, and the Android SDK, uh, as of currently, you still need to have various 32-bit uh, libraries in order to work with Android. In the future, hopefully this changes, but as of right now, uh, you'll need both 64-bit and 32-bit libraries. Once we go ahead and say that we want to allow those, we can do an update uh, in our repository list uh, for Ubuntu, and this will allow us to find out all, all the new latest things. Uh, and then this is where we, we make use of this 32-bit library architecture stuff. Uh, so we're going to install all of these libraries. These are, um, these are compilation libraries um, like C++ and C that will allow us to work with Android. Uh, very necessary for the Android SDK, not so much Node.js or NativeScript. Uh, then next up, we have to install the latest version of Java, so the, the latest Java developer, developer kit. We also need to install uh, G++ because when you install NativeScript, you will need to compile uh, certain NativeScript libraries. Uh, NPM will do this for you, the Node Package Manager. Uh, with with all of our libraries starting to get installed, uh, the first thing we want to see is is Java is Java Home already set? If Java Home is already set, we're gonna we're gonna skip over this. Otherwise, we're gonna try to find 
the path to whatever default Java is, because default Java generally isn't useful to us. Uh, we want to know the specific Java, like 1.7 or 1.8 or whatever. So we want to export that, and we also want to add it to our user profile file. So that way, the next time we log into our computer, uh, Java Home is still going to be set. Now we're going to move on to um, specifying where we want to download the Android SDK and Node.js. And we're going to download that to the temp directory because we're going to be downloading archives, uh, these tarballs. And when we extract them, we really don't want to do any cleanup ourselves. So we're going to let the operating system clean up the temp directory as it deems necessary. Uh, so starting with Node, we're going to see if uh, Node Home exists. If it does not exist, we're going to download the latest Node.js file, which we defined up top. Uh, we're going to untar it, and we're going to copy it over to the installation path, which is the op directory, and we're going to name that thing Node. So the directory is going to be called Node. Uh, we're also going to add this Node home path to our user profile, uh, as well as appending it to the actual path of the user profile. For Android, we're going to follow the same same strategy here. We're going to download it uh, using wget. We're going to extract it. We're going to copy it uh, because we don't like the naming convention that it gives us. We're going to copy it to the Android SDK of our install path. We're going to change the ownership of that directory. So this is where that parent user comes in. We don't want this to be root root. Instead, in my case, I want it to be nreboy or whatever user you're logged in with. And that's where what this will do. And we're going to recursively set the ownership to our local user. We're also going to give it permission set 777 uh, because there isn't anything particular, particularly sensitive in the Android SDK. So we're going to go ahead and by adding um, permissions of 777, we're just giving full access to any user that wants to use it. And we're going to recursively do that. Again, we're going to add the Android Home into our profile along with various pathing like tools and platform tools, and that'll allow us to run Android commands from our terminal. After we do that, we export it, and we're going to do a silent installation of the Android tools because when you download and install the Android SDK, uh, it's very plain, it's empty, and that's to keep the download size small. Because if you go and you download everything that's part of the Android SDK, that's like 50 gigabytes worth of files. Uh, so instead, we're only going to silently install the files that native script requires. Um, and that's being uh, the development tools 22 and higher. So as of right now, 23 would be the highest stable. We want to add the Android support repository and the Android support library. Uh, these are all requirements of native script. Finally, when Node.js and Android are both installed, um, we can then go ahead and install native script. So npm, which is part of Node.js, so this is the Node package manager, we're going to install native script globally. Uh, because we're still using sudo, um, we do have to say unsafe permission, so that way we can say that the sudo user is allowed to install global node packages. Uh, so this is fine. There's, you shouldn't have to worry too much on this one. When everything is installed, we need to do some cleanup on the permissions and the ownership. So um, inside of your local user directory, right here, uh, Android, node gip, and TN, TN source are all going to have the root user as their user in their group. And that's incorrect because you're inside your local home directory, so it should be that of your local user. And that's why we're changing it back to parent user. We're doing that recursively, and likewise with the local share and this native script CLI. These should all be part of the local user, and we're setting it back to that after the script is finished. When it's all done, it's just going to tell us to restart our session. And by that, I mean either restart your computer, log out of Ubuntu, do whatever it takes to just restart your Ubuntu session. So this script isn't too complicated. There's not too much going on. It's mostly just downloading and changing of permissions a little bit. Um, nothing, nothing that really changes the core 
operating system functionality. So now we're going to see that script in action. So go ahead and open up your terminal. And what we want to do is we want to first navigate to this directory in our desktop. So we're going to say CD desktop. And then we're going to say Ubuntu um, native script installer master. Our script might have the incorrect permissions because GitHub might alter the permissions when we when I push the, the script up. So what we want to do is we want to make sure it has execute permissions. So we can say uh, change mod plus X. So that's giving it plus execute permission. And then Ubuntu native script installer. So I'm going to clear my terminal here. Now I'm going to say sudo. Remember, I'm currently logged in as nraboy. Um, do not use root as your user. sudo, and I'm going to say dot slash for the current directory, and then Ubuntu native script installer dot sh, and hit enter. And enter my password. And of course, now it's updating. Now this script, depending on your internet connection, uh, could take a little while. For me, start to finish, it takes about seven minutes. Uh, but again, my internet connection is pretty fast. Um, I imagine that if you are on a slower internet connection, it could take um, up to 30 minutes to an hour. So just, just let it do its thing, uh, unless it specifically tells you that you've received some kind of weird errors. Uh, just assume that it's working correctly. All right, at the end of the script, native script is going to ask you two questions. Um, it's going to first uh, ask you if you want to send anonymous information. I go ahead and say yes. And second, if you want to use uh, command line completion, which I also say yes. It's up to you on both of these. Uh, they're both optional. All right. Now that the script has finished, we want to go ahead and uh, log out of the session. So that way everything gets refreshed. All right, let's log back in. All right, go ahead and open up your terminal again. We're going to go and test and make sure everything worked out fine. So let's navigate to our desktop. First, we're going to say, uh, see what version of Node installed. So we're going to say Node hyphen V. And there it is, version uh, point two, one two. Uh, now we're going to see uh, what version of Telerik native script is installed. So we're going to say TNS hyphen hyphen version, I believe, is the, is the command. And it's 1.5.2. So let's further test that. Let's say TNS create um, my project. And that's going to create it on our desktop. All right. So it created it on our desktop. Let's go ahead and say TNS platform add Android. All right. Looks good to me. Uh, finally, we're going to say we want to uh, build our project. So we're going to say TNS build Android. And this uh, is the true test to see if Android, of course, will build it for us. All right, looks like it completed successfully. Uh, so just like that, you saw my script on how to install native script in the Android SDK and Node.js. Um, you saw what it does and then how you can run it yourself uh, with one command. Um, just remember, uh, first of all, don't run this as the root user. Uh, second of all, you have to use sudo. And then third, uh, there are two questions at the end that you have to be available for. Uh, and then I guess fourth you can say is this is only for Android because Linux will not build iOS applications. You need a Mac for that. Uh, so, but Ubuntu is a very good platform to develop with, and uh, I know I, I use it all the time.